Hello, my name is Robert Zeiser. I'm the director of the Division of Tumor Immunology at Freiburg University Medical Center. And today I will talk about the mechanism of action of iproteinib, roxolitinib, and belomosodil, and their role in chronic graft versus host disease. So what is chronic graft versus host disease? It is a major immunological complication of allergenic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, and it involves multiple organs um, involving the skin, the liver, the GI tract, but also other organs. And uh, it reduces the quality of life and often requires long-term immunosuppression with glucocorticosteroids, which have severe um, side effects, as we know. After a long period of time of research in the field of chronic graft versus host disease for over four decades, um, now we have the situation that three drugs have been recently approved by the FDA for the treatment of chronic graft versus host disease. Those three drugs are the ones that I will talk about, iprotinib, belomosodil, and roxolitinib. I will start with iprotinib because it was the first uh, one approved um, in 2017. Iprotinib is a selective irreversible inhibitor of Bruton's tyrosine kinase, BTK, which is a non-receptor tyrosine kinase that belongs to the TEC family of kinases. And it's predominantly expressed in B cells. Um, Ipotinib inhibits um, signal transduction downstream of the B cell receptor, and thereby blocks activation of B cells. And B cells are important in the pathogenesis of chronic graft versus host disease. Increased B cell receptor rep responsiveness has been ob observed in patients uh, with chronic graft versus host disease, and therefore we have a um, scientific rationale um, to target this signaling. Additionally, iprotinib blocks IL-2 inducible kinase, ITK, that shares significant sequence and functional homology with BTK, and it also belongs to the TEC kinase family. Um, ITK contributes to proximal T cell receptor signaling, activating PLC1, uh, which leads to activation of NFAT and nf kappa b and MAP kinase pathways, which ultimately lead to T-cell activation cytokine release. I come to the second therapy, belomosodil. This is a selective inhibitor of um, Rho-associated coiled coil-containing protein kinase 2, ROC2. And ROC2 activation is downstream of cytokine and growth factor receptors and integrins, and it promotes the production of pro-inflammatory IL-21 and IL-17, which have been both implicated in the pathogenesis of chronic graft versus host disease. Activation of um, STAT3 um, declined upon treatment with bilomusodil, while STAT5 phosphorylation increased. This is important because STAT5 activation uh, was previously shown to promote regulatory T cell um, lineage commitment. Roxolitinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that targets the genus kinases 1 and 2, JAK1 and 2. And these mediate downstream effects of multiple cytokines, such as, for example, IL-6, interferon gamma, IL-7, IL-15, which also have been shown to play a role in graft versus host disease. In mice, roxolitinib produces a polarization of CD4 T cells. Um, and uh, additionally, um, TREC frequencies were increased in the spleen and the intestinal track upon treatment with roxolitinib. Besides the impact um, on T cells, um, roxolitinib was also shown to reduce MHC class II expression on allergen presenting cells. Um, and dendritic cells, like dendritic cells and neutrophils, um, and it reduced collagen deposition um, in the lungs and improved pulmonary function in mouse models of chronic graft versus disease. So now I come to the clinical activity of those three um, approved drugs. Based on promising preclinical results, um, ipotinib was tested in adult patients with chronic GVHD in a phase 1b slash 2 open label multicenter trial. Um, in, this, in this trial, 42 patients were enrolled. The overall response rate was um, 67% with a CR rate of 21. Um, and um, based on these promising results, iprotinib was approved by the FDA um, in 2017. And the uh, later results of a randomized placebo-controlled phase um, three trial 
um, e evaluated the role of iprotinib in combination with corticosteroids in treating patients with newly diagnosed um, moderate to severe chronic gravis host disease. Um, in this trial, the primary endpoint um, was not met. However, there was a trend towards an improved response. To test the efficacy of ROC2 inhibition uh, in patients a phase 1 slash 2 open label dose finding study of bilomosodil enrolled uh, 54 patients with chronic GVHD who had received one or three prior lines of therapy. And the overall response rate with bilomosodil um, was um, 65% um, in the 200 milligram uh, twice daily dose, 69% 200 milligram twice daily dose and 400 milli and in the 400 milligram dose it was um, 62%. So overall response rates around 60%, 60 to 70%. Bilomosodil was well tolerated with low rates of cytopenias in contrast to oxolitinib. The subsequent phase two randomized multicenter trial was performed with chronic graphic associates these patients um, who had received two to five prior lines um, thera, uh, of therapy. And here the best of all response um, was 74% and 77% into the, in the different dose rates. It's important to um, note that this is best of all response and, and not um, the overall response at a certain time point. Um, Bilomosodil was approved by the FDA in 2021 for adult and pediatric patients with chronic graphic host disease after failure of at least two prior lines of therapy. Um, so to test hoxolitinib and chronic GVHD, a randomized open-label multicenter clinical trial of hoxolitinib compared um, hoxo versus best available therapy for corticosteroid refractory chronic GVHD. Um, the trial randomized um, 329 patients in a one-to-one -one measure manner to receive hooks or BAT. The overall response rate at uh, week 24 was greater in the hooks group as compared to the control group, and the median failure-free survival was longer in the hooks group compared to the control group. Therefore, in September um, last year, the FDA approved hooksolitinib um, twice daily, 10 milligrams for chronic GVHD after failure of one or two lines of systemic therapy for chronic GVHD. So with that, I would like to conclude. Um, there are three attractive novel therapies with different modes of action that have shown clinical activity. And I hope for our chronic GVHD patients that this will help um, to improve the outcome of patients with chronic graphic host disease. I thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.